more is still to come. At EUJ, we train leaders since 1993. Good evening. You are watching my media prime television, and this is Prime News. We broadcasting live from our studios here in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. My name is Von Quinta. The news starts now. The President of the Republic today chaired an extraordinary summit of smack heads of state via video conferencing at the Unity Palace. The summit is being held to discuss security concerns in the sub-region, health crisis linked to the coronavirus pandemic, and its. devastating effects in the sub-region, the implementation of the African continental free trade amongst others. Current chair of the SMAC sub-region Paul Bia, in his opening speech states, he is convinced the summit will result in the adoption of relevant measures likely to keep the region on the path of its economic and social emergence. Now the National Anti-Corruption Commission has launched a nationwide back-to-school campaign without corruption. The launching ceremony chaired by the President of the Commission, Jodane Masigams, took place today in Douala Details with Joinga. The corruption-free back-to-school campaign launched by CONAC today at the government's bilingual high school, Daido, is aimed at drawing the attention of the education community to the damaging effects of corruption, protect children from the social cankerworm, as well as equip them with the necessary skills to fight against corruption. Speaking to the press shortly after the launching ceremony, the chairman of the National Anti-Corruption Commission highlighted the main practices that the campaign is intended to tackle. The first one is to call attention of those who are responsible of different set of schools so as to tell them that corruption is not something that we must continue to do because the head of state used to say that public service is free. Secondly, we call the attention of those who are also in, the, in charge of schools to know that if there are the cases of corruption which are denounced, we will follow and conduct those who are guilty to Douala, being one of the most populated cities in Cameroon, has produced the highest number of complaints relating to enrollment and the management of PTA levies. The perception of corruption in the littoral is a little bit higher. It is about uh, 6.25 uh, over 10. And we have also the problem of crisis coming from two regions, uh, angle from two regions, and we feel that many students or many children come here and they want to have places, and it is possible that bribery and uh, corruption can be done. The administrative officials present at the launch ceremony promise to put in their support for the effectiveness of the campaign. We are going to face them so that uh, all, everybody passing will read and be conscious of the fact that it is something they ought not to do. The launching ceremony ended with the handing of campaign kits to top administrative authorities of the region. Worthy of note is the fact that the first anti-corruption board with the inscription Public Service is Free was pasted by the chairman himself at the government bilingual high school GBHS Daido. From Douala, the campaign will continue in other localities and schools throughout the Stress in Douala says the affluence is without enthusiasm. Apparently this year, demands are low. There is no affluence. We are left with less than two weeks into school resumption, but commands are limited. We don't know why, but the materials are already here. So we await the parents now. Maybe at the last minute, things will get better. But as for now, nothing is moving. We don't know if the children will wear their old uniforms. Nonetheless, we keep our fingers crossed. Madame Alice is another seamstress who also shares her opinion on the flow of business on her part. 
Parents have been placing orders on my part, but others say they await the payment of their salaries before they can come and place their orders. So for now, business is progressing at an arithmetic rate since many parents are awaiting on the end of month for their salaries to be paid. Others also want to know if their children will make the GCE before knowing the schools where they will be enrolled to study. Talking further to Annie Foku, unlike the previous years where she had been lucky to receive commands from schools to sew uniforms for pupils and students, this year, not even a single school has contacted her for such demands. However, she says she still remains optimistic, trusting her pace. If a school places its command, I can prepare even two to four months before resumption. I saw to suit all shapes and sizes, from the nursery to the high school levels. For a day, I can sew five to six uniforms. But now that there are no demands, I'm taking my time. Nonetheless, despite the low demands, everyone is putting hands on deck to ensure that deliveries are made on time. Still ahead, prices of some basic commodities in markets in Douala have witnessed an increase. Student journalist on internship, Bate Suzanne, visited a Bonamusadi market and compiled the following report. The rampant hike in prices of basic commodities in Cameroon has been attributed to the outburst of the COVID-19 pandemic by many buy and sellers in the market. According to a vendor in the Bonamusadi market, since the coming of the COVID-19 to the country and subsequent closure of borders, basic commodities like rice, vegetable oil, just to name a few, have witnessed a drastic increase in their prices, being that there isn't a free flow of these commodities into the country. <laughs> Everything is now very expensive, even the different brands of rice, due to border closure after the outbreak of COVID-19. Prices have increased because of how unavailable some of these products are. Another seller who spoke to us of camera says, a bag of onion that was sold at about 44,000 francs two months ago is now sold at about 64,000 francs. On the part of the buyers, they explain that feeding in their various homes has not been easy. They complain of the everyday increase in the prices of basic commodities. Others say this increase cannot be blamed only on the COVID-19 pandemic, but equally on the socio-political states of the country. Both sellers and buyers lament and call on those in charge to do something regarding this increase in the prices of basic commodities. Now, Cameroon's defense and security forces have cleared off uh, roadblocks on the Bamenda Bali stretch, which had remained blocked for over a month. Student journalist on internship Nuba Naivona has details of this story. The Bamenda Bali stretch of road in Mazam Division, northwest region of Cameroon, blocked several weeks ago by separatist fighters, has been cleared by elements of defense and security forces. The clearing exercise which took place on Tuesday, August 17, was supervised by the commander of the 5th Joint Military Region, Brigadier General Cavalier. While celebrating the efforts of the Defense and Security Forces in maintaining peace in the region, Cavalier called on the population to collaborate with Cameroon's Defense and Security Forces. Why? I was congratulating the, the, the guys for a job well done. Though we know we still have a lot to do because we still have a lot of those uh, uh, tourists here in, in Bali. So this is why we plan this. And also to make sure that that road, the road from uh, Bamenda to Bali, Bati, Bongi, Dikum, and Mount Fe, and Pekok, should be uh, open. Make population know say we day here now for Sika them. We mission where we get now for camp protect them, themselves and their property. So wait till where it happen for Bali. We no get 
any reaction from their population for can't talk say this so we condemn this thing a few people at least they sympathize with the forces the thing i want to talk to say as of today we still think say we'll never get enough collaboration from the population the population all over not only bali the whole of northwest they must make sure say they collaborate with the forces because now for sika them we we they on mission for here it should be recalled that circulation on the 19 kilometer bamenda bali road has since july 18 been paralyzed on the 17th of july 2021 the ambush uh, uh policemen here in here in bali and five policemen well, policemen were, were killed and also their weapons taken. Uh, after this, the, the AZ of Mezam uh, took an, uh, an order, you know, prohibiting the circulation of motorbikes in Bali uh, subdivision. But uh, those terrorists oppose that order or that decision of the SDO and saying that no car should ply the road from Bamenda to Bali. However, with the clearance of the Bali road, it is still not clear whether or not circulation will return to normalcy as fear of the unknown still reigns amongst users of the said road. The second graduation of the Cameroon Baptist Convention Health Services Regional Center for Excellence took place recently at the CBC Health Service Complex Mutengene, Southwest Region of Cameroon. Charles Kibo attended the graduation ceremony and compiled the following report for Prime News. The sign out of the second graduates of the Cameroon Baptist Convention Health Services Training Center for Excellence, RTC, that seeks to assist in building of a sustainable health services through developing effective health leaders, took place Saturday, August 14, 2021, at the CBC Health Services Complex, Mutengene, in the presence of dignitaries and personalities, saw the sign out of 16 students with a BSc in Health and Social System Management, validated by the University of Manchester in the UK. Ten students with diploma in human nutrition and clinical dietetics validated by Midway Institute of Health Science Uganda and more than a hundred students with certificates in leadership management and governance validated by Ambrief Africa, the academic registrar. This school was created to help um, uh, health health within the sub-Saharan African region and so we had trainers that came all the way from Sierra Leone, Ghana, and all of West Africa. The ceremony that began with devotion, reading from 2 Corinthians 4 verses 7 to 9 and reflecting on the theme, hope and dreams for your future, the guest preacher, Reverend Dr. Teke John, said God has given the graduates the potential and knowledge acquired to bring change and be transforming agents. The academic dean, Professor Nko Godlof, acknowledged the school operates within a mission of seeking to assist in building up sustainable health system. <laughs> The training center uh, is um, a site for excellence that is used that trains health care providers um, to meet the, the, the needs of the current, the current needs uh, on time. To the graduates, through the students' representative, we have been teachers, we have been given the opportunity to do the stage to study around the community's issues affecting health care. Professor T. Pius Mufi, his representative and that of the executive president of the Cameroon Baptist Convention, Reverend Dr. Determe, extend congratulations to the management and staff of RTC, said as a church are doing all in holistic passion, encourage the graduates to uphold and continue to shine the light. An academic discourse on the theme, developing effective leadership 
Partnership for Sustainable Healthcare Delivery, presented by Professor Ayonge Samuel, said their going out should be responsible in leadership activities in delivering healthcare services. A second assistant DO for Tico and a regional delegate for public health both appealed to the Cameroon Baptist Convention. The center be open to other denominations. Students from far and near their graduates are qualified to work within government, private institutions, communities, council and NGOs in and out of Cameroon. Humanitarian organizations operating in the crisis affected northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon are calling on warring parties to ensure a conducive environment for them to carry out their humanitarian activities. The concern was re echoed during this year's World Humanitarian Day celebrated in Boya under the theme Humanitarians are not a target. Clarice Ekowe with details. It is no doubt that the ongoing security crisis plaguing the northwest and southwest regions has affected all phases of life. The case of humanitarian workers is not different, as some humanitarian workers have either lost their lives while others have been kidnapped as they venture out to provide humanitarian services to those in need. Celebrating this year's World Humanitarian Day, these, among other challenges, facing humanitarian workers was bolded. Uh, today we are celebrating uh, Humanitarian Day uh, by Humanitarians, that's World Humanitarian Day. And uh, it's very significant because uh, it's coming at the time when a lot of humanitarian actors uh, have been targeted, have been kidnapped, have been killed. You know, a lot of our police in the field have been kidnapped over the years. Uh, it's really believe the context of this crisis. And so we're using this opportunity to basically raise awareness that humanitarian actors are never targets. Understand the context in which we face in the South African country. We are celebrating in South Sudan to remember those that are actually falling as a result of the crisis. As Ndape Sali, another humanitarian worker, added, The objective of this world game is to show unity and love among ourselves. It means if there is a case somewhere, you can refer the case to your from your other colleague so that he can carry on the activities. Well aware of the challenges facing humanitarian workers, the head of Orchard sub office in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, Ali Dawood, used this year's World Humanitarian Day celebration to encourage humanitarian workers not to relent their efforts as there are people in dire need of their services. <laughs> This year's World Humanitarian Day also featured various activities such as a sport walk, a friendly football encounter, among others. <laughs> On our health page, Bokengo was the focused on maternal and child mortality. And according to the World Health Organization, a pregnant woman or newborn dies every 11 seconds somewhere around the world. With most of these deaths said to be preventable details, right ahead. Antenatal care is a preventive health care given to a pregnant woman during pregnancy to help provide information about pregnancy, lifestyle, complications, and delivery. Antenatal care is all about health care given to a pregnant woman. It is a care given to all pregnant women to reduce the risk of pre pregnancy complications. Secondly, antenatal care is for you to plan yourself for delivery. With complications that include stillbirth, miscarriage, high blood pressure, preeclampsia, infections, depression, anxiety, hormonal changes, mood swings, and more during pregnancy, many pregnant women still miss antenatal rendezvous, making themselves vulnerable to some pregnancy hazards. Many women in a society, they don't plan this themselves for labor. That's why when they go to the hospital, they face difficulties. They are, uh, they are unable to cooperate with the midwives. So with them to have a good knowledge during antenatal care, we actually is the work for a midwife and is a normal delivery. What they have noted is the fact that underlying health conditions can be revealed during antenatal care visit. During the antenatal care, what we do is the first visit, they check if the baby actually 
is in the uterus or is actually a baby because at times it's not actually a baby but you feel you have all the complications you have all the signs and symptoms of uh, uh, signs and symptoms of pregnancy it should be born in mind that an estimated 2.8 million pregnant women die yearly due to lack of advanced know-how unethical beliefs and poor lifestyle choices during pregnancy News out of the country, a Kenyan doctor based in the United Kingdom has been charged in court for selling a COVID-19 remedy. Details on these and top stories in Africa with Alan Summer. Let's start off in Ethiopia, where at least seven people have lost their lives following heavy rain in the capital Addis Ababa, as rivers burst their banks causing heavy flooding. Adanek Abir Abie, the city's mayor, in a tweet, said that the damage to life and property was severe in several areas at this Ababa. Reports say dozens were injured and were being treated in different hospitals. The mayor expressed her deepest grief for flood victims, adding that the city has learned the need to do more to minimize impact of heavy rains during rainy seasons. A Kenyan preacher in the UK has been charged in court for selling what he called a COVID-19 remedy. The said preacher, Bishop Climate Irungu Wiseman, reportedly sold a bottle of a mixture of oils at 91 euros, an equivalent of $125. He was charged with fraud and unfair trading offenses in a London court, but pleaded not guilty. Irungu Wiseman displayed videos online claiming the oils were a cure for the deadliest virus COVID-19. Note should be taken here that according to the World Health Organization WHO, there is no cure for COVID-19. But many African countries have been battling the disease with locally made remedies. Wiseman runs the Bishop Climate Ministries, which is part of the Kingdom Church located in South London. A state governor in Nigeria has urged citizens to acquire weapons to defend themselves from armed criminal gangs carrying out kidnappings for ransom. The governor of the northwestern Katsina state, Aminu Masari, blamed citizens for the continued attacks by armed gangs. He said the attackers were encouraged by what he called people's meek submission to their threats. The governor made the comment during a visit to the town of Jibia on Tuesday, one of the communities affected by recent violence. However, Nigeria's defense minister was severely criticized for making similar remarks in February. Critics say encouraging civilians to acquire weapons to confront heavily armed groups may escalate Nigeria's widespread security problems. For the record, the violence has seen many people killed and millions displaced with thousands of school children being kidnapped. And the draw ceremony of the Africa Cup of Nations took place yesterday, Yaga 17, 2021, at the Yawunde Conference Center. Cameroon host country who played their counterparts from Burkina Faso win the opening match on January 9, 2022, at the Olympus Sports Complex. Noraka Kebi followed the draws yesterday and compiled the following report for Prime News. All roads in the capital city of Yaoundé yesterday, August 17, led to the Yaoundé Conference Center, where the much-anticipated draws for the upcoming Africa Cup of Nations AFCON took place with many dignitaries present to grace the event. Among the dignitaries present at the draw was CAF President Patrice Motsepe, who was satisfied with the organization and the technical setup of the event. The 57-year-old CAF President remarked that the success and growth of football in Africa is inextricably intertwined with the growth of the economies of these nations. He added that AFCON 2021 will showcase African football as one of the best exciting and competitive in the world. Many legends were called on stage when the draws proper were to begin. Samuel Leto, Gael Enangamwit, Didier Drogba and Asamoah Gyan joined CAF's director of competition, Samson Adamu. The Ghanaian football icon Asamoah Gyan appreciated the efforts put in place by the host country to make things work in view of the African Cup of Nations. Meanwhile, former Senegalese footballer El Haji Diouf applauded Cameroon's high sense of the organization of the tournament. In the colorful ceremony at the Yaoundé Conference, 
Conference Center, Cameroon was drawn alongside Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, and Cape Verde in Group A of the 2021 AFCON in the opening game of the competition, which will be played at the Olembe Football Stadium with a capacity of 60,000 spectators. Cameroon as host country will face Burkina Faso. In view of the AFCON 2021 scheduled to take place in Cameroon in January, many Cameroonians are hopeful that the team will restore glory to the country given their home advantage. Meanwhile, others still doubt if the team is equal to the task. And we've come to the end of today's edition of Prime News, compiled for us by Lasha Kingsley. My name is Von Quinta. Prime comes up at exactly 7 p.m. with Kumlena. Stay with us. Good night.